morning, everyone. It is Wednesday, September 14th. Thank you for joining. Let's begin with prayer. Father God, we praise your name and we give all the glory to you. And we thank you, Father God, for this opportunity to spend time in your word. We pray, Father God, that our ears be open, that our minds be open, and that our eyes continually go into your word so that we can grow, Father God, and so that we can encourage others to have a relationship with you. We love you, Father God, and we pray all of this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. We are in Genesis 24, 1 through 9, with titles such as Preparing for Posterity, God Honoring Choices, and Oath of Loyalty. Abraham was now very old, and the Lord had blessed him in every way. He said to the senior servant in his household, the one in charge of all that he had, put your hand under my thigh. I want you to swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of earth, that you will not get a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites among whom I am living, but will go to my country and my own relatives and get a wife for my son Isaac. The servant asked him, what if the woman is unwilling to come back with me to this land? Shall I then take your son back to the country you came from? Make sure that you do not take my son back there, Abraham said. The Lord, the God of heaven, who brought me out of my father's household and my native land, and who spoke to me and promised me on oath, saying, To your offspring I will give this land. He will send his angel before you, so that you can get a wife for my son from there. If the woman is unwilling to come back with you, then you will be released from this oath of mine. Only do not take my son back there. So the servant put his hand under the thigh of his master Abraham and swore an oath to him concerning this matter. In two it says, he said to the senior servant in his household, the one in charge of all that he had, put your hand under my thigh. Putting a hand under a thigh symbolized a binding oath. Today we shake hands, we swear oaths, or we sign documents in the presence of a notary public. In three, it says, I want you to swear by the Lord. This affirmed this commi commitment. Also in three, it says that you will not get a wife, a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites because the Canaanites were idol worshipers. In four, it says, but will go to my country and my own relatives and get a wife for my son, Isaac. Marriage within the family was acceptable in these times because it prevented marriages with the pagans. In seven, it says, the Lord, the God of heaven, who brought me out of my father's household and my native land, and who spoke to me and promised me on oath saying, to your offspring, I will give this land. He will send his angel before you so that you can get a wife for my son from there. Abraham wanted to obey God in the who as well as in the where. God has his hand in our lives. When we are followers, though sometimes our lives can be difficult, but God cares and he helps us make the right decisions about whom to marry, where to work, how to raise children, etc. God's hand is there. God's hand continually leads us to make the right decisions. While we may question God, be assured that he has our backs. He wants us to be happy. He wants us to succeed in life. He wants to use us to establish his kingdom here on earth. He has a role for each and every one of us. Blessed are we when we respond in obedience. Abraham is banking on God's promises. God's promises that he would be the father of many nations through his son, Isaac. God is a promise keeper from generation to generation. So spend time in the Bible Spend time on God's promises. Remember that God always has our backs. He wants the best for us. He didn't choose us as his children to make us unhappy or to punish us. He 
chose us because he loves us and he wants to spend eternity with us but he also wants us to invite others to spend eternity with him so reflect on god's grace and mercy that he showers on us continually and share that with others share the love of jesus with others share what jesus did on the cross for each and every one of us make a commitment to god today that you will bring others to Jesus, that you will look for opportunities to share Jesus with someone, with a stranger, maybe with your mailman, maybe with your UPS driver, maybe with your Amazon driver, maybe with the grocery store packer. Make a commitment to God that you will be obedient to his will to spread his kingdom here on earth. Be aware that we are blessed continually and that we can be a blessing to others. We just need to open up our mouths. We need to open up our hearts so that we can share Jesus with others, that we can open others' ears, open others' minds, help them to know God like we know him, know about God's promises. You know, even though being a Christian can be difficult at times, it is a joy. We have a joy that non-believers have do not have so reflect on god's promises and share that with others share how you became a christian share why you remain to be a christian share the love of jesus with someone this week let's pray father god we pray that each and every one of us be bold in sharing you this week we pray father god that we open up our mouths father god so that we can open up the hearts in the minds and the ears of those who are living in darkness. We pray, Father God, that we do not miss opportunities, that we take advantage of every opportunity that you lay before us, that we do not walk away, that we do not punish ourselves for walking away when you gave an opportunity to us. We pray, Father God, that we boldly face our opportunities, that we be used by you continually, that we share your love with the world. We love you, Father God, and we pray all of this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you, everyone. Have a week filled with blessings. Share Jesus with someone this week. Pull someone out of darkness this week. Comfort someone with words, with God's words this week. God bless you, everyone. Bye-bye.